working hard, hardly working. Productivity, laziness. Success, failure. Today I want to talk a little bit about sort of a mental framing that I've come across recently that's actually really helped me just get things done and reduce the frequency with which my laziness takes over and then full on procrastination sets in. There's loads of quippy productivity hack type content constantly doing the rounds ranging from things like the two minute rule to Pomodoro revision techniques, each of which are entirely valid in their own right. But the game changing thing about today's mental framing is that I think it gets to the source of the procrastination problem rather than just providing short term cures. Hi there friends, my name's Matt, I'm an economic graduate and accountant and today I'm going to talk about two different pieces of productivity procrastination type chat that I've come across on podcasts in recent weeks I think both are pulling in a very similar direction and when combined can be really eye-opening first up is the idea of thinking about work in the abstract or work in the abstract so the theory being proposed on the not overthinking podcast is the idea that it's easy to bog yourself down with thoughts like oh I've got so much work to do this weekend or oh, I've only just woken up and I know I've got such a long day of work ahead of me. This is thinking about work in the abstract and I am slash was guilty of doing it all the time. It's an instinctive internal conversation that we have with ourselves mainly because that sort of lazy wording is something that we're all brought up with, we're used to it and we hear it all over the place. To combat the baggage associated with this sort of mindset, a shift towards thinking far more prescriptively about what work actually needs to be done can be really helpful and reduce the extent to which it seems like an endless black hole of tasks. The Sunday afternoon lull of knowing there's work to do before you can go to bed and before the week ahead can be nipped in the bud by just being really internally specific about what that work actually is going to involve. Even I've got to deal with a few emails sounds pretty grey but if you think to yourself oh, I need to get back to Tom with the updated FY22 balance sheet figures once I've changed the stock assumption to be slightly more conservative that sort of thinking means that the parameters are really well defined in terms of what you're actually going to do and the task isn't left open-ended in your mind. And I think in a lot of cases these individual tasks aren't actually that daunting and can often be interesting to get stuck into whereas work or work in the abstract is just far less appealing of a concept. This leads on to the second framework that I want to touch on and it's that the opposite of play isn't work it's depression. This is another one that stems back to the way that everyone's brought up at school. You're either in lessons, working, or you're outside on break time, playing. It's a little bit of an implicit either or setup. People work in the week and play at weekends, or people work most of the time and play while they're on holiday. When you stop to think about it for a second, it's almost like it's part of this wider tacit agreement that everyone's got, whereby work is the sacrifice and play is the reward for that but what if it doesn't need to be like this what if there can be way more overlap between work and play and this is something that takes me a second just to stop and get my head around what that actually would look like what that would actually mean again this all reverts back to the negative connotations associated with the word work because it's work it's not allowed to be fun because i have to do it it can't be play and taking a step back and letting the realisation of this sort of soak in for a sec really hit me hard. It certainly gets me thinking about some of the things I do and whether they nominally fall into the work or play bucket and how I just think about them differently depending on that. I like listening to podcasts where people talk about how they've grown their business but I'm also on work calls with people saying the exact same sort of stuff as part of the process for actually selling their business but somehow that's work so it's not as fun. I'd never listened to a recording of it back whilst I was going for a walk. The same goes for writing out ideas for YouTube versus writing out due diligence report slides or doing brain teaser type puzzles versus figuring out why a balance sheet's not balancing. The inherent framing of the activity makes a huge difference to how I think about it in my own mind and I'm not sure it really needs to be that way at all. What I'm trying to do going forwards to keep on reducing the extent to which I procrastinate is to keep both of these ideas in mind and basically make sure that subconsciously I'm not being daunted by this big scary concept of doing some work. Whether that be a busy day of work in the abstract or just the fact that something happens to nominally fall into the bucket of being work. Hopefully one or even better both of these ideas have resonated with you slightly and if that's the case please let me know down below. I'll leave a link up here to another sort of deep chat type video that I'm trying to sort of branch out to. Um, this one's around the British philosopher Alan Watts um, so yeah feel free to check that one out. Um, but I think that's everything from me right here today. Hopefully see you in the next video. Stay safe and bye bye guys.